Hello there everybody, Skoshi here with what is hopefully a very quick video for today because I actually don't have a lot of time unfortunately today, uh, which is Saturday, uh, so this video will either be going up today, Saturday, or it'll be going up tomorrow, Sunday, it depends how much time I have, you know, to record this and fit this all in and, and like edit it together. But yeah, we got a new trailer for Mortal Kombat, actually we got two new trailers for Mortal Kombat 1, and I'll talk about the good stuff first because as you'll probably know, if you follow me on Twitter or just by the title of the video and all that, uh, one thing I'm very not happy with, but we'll, we'll, we will get to that. So the good. We got three new characters uh, shown off for the base roster, and they were Lee Mei, Tanya, and uh, Baraka, and all three look great. One thing I'm a bit kind of met on is that like I, I, I like how Lee Mei looks, but I, I don't know, something about it just, she seems to, I don't know, she just looks very similar to like Melina. And there's times where it's like, I actually saw someone reacting to the trailer and there's a part where Baraka is like beating up Lee Mei in his, in his section of the trailer. And the person, you know, watching the trailer thought that Baraka was beating up Melina. And like, I totally get it. And I'm like, oh no, like in motion when you don't really, when you can't see the finer details, like she actually really looks like Melina. So yeah, that's not great. I'm sure she'll have more like unique alternate costumes, which at this point is kind of, I feel like a common theme. Where like I'm definitely relying on some alternate costumes to kind of like help kind of carry characters' designs a bit more. Uh, not to say that the default designs are bad, but you know, in some cases they're just not really my thing, or I think they could be a bit better. I, I am disappointed they didn't keep you know the do rag you know that she had interception. I know I really like that part of her design, and I feel like it was you know it. I felt like it was a defining thing, uh, you know, for Emily May, and mostly because you know I assume because I play Deception like a ton when I was a kid and that was you know that was her default design and Deception was the do-rag so that's probably why I just like associate with Lee Mei the most but yeah she looks good uh, I like her story her story she used to be part of like the Ungardi which is just like sort of just feels like the um the the the, the all-female kind of group of warriors from like Black Panther I can't, I can't I can't remember the name at the moment they all seem very similar so but I, I, I think it's a cool concept I think it makes a lot of sense I think it's going to lead to some fun stuff I think her story is good where Basically, by sounds of it, she, uh, for, you know, maybe not her own fault, maybe, you know, partly her fault, we'll have to see, but she basically let Jared die. So, and then she, I think, I, I don't think she was so much, like, fired, but I think just out of shame, she just left, and now she's just, like, I'm glad that they're incorporating, like, Sundo into, like, part of her story still, because she's now, like, a police officer or something, or a police constable in the outer world capital which i think is really cool and you know so so just good stuff overall like, i'm really happy like she looks fun to play i'm glad she's back she's always a character i felt like i don't know got got a rougher deal than most in terms of like overall fan reception like i've seen so many people you know prior to her reveal be like oh you know no one's gonna care when lee may gets revealed and I, just, I i never got that like yeah she was never the most exciting character from the 3d era but i never thought she was bad you know some people put her on the same pedestal as like dairu and darius and you know, all these other characters that really just didn't have a lot to them. And I, I like Lee Mei. I always thought she was, you know, pretty underrated. So, yeah, I'm very happy with that. Then we got Tanya. And honestly, like, I'm pretty happy that Tanya's in the game. Like, she's never one of my favorites. I think she's a cool character. But it was one of those things of, like, oh, cool, like, Tanya's here. And then, like, you know, I kind of just, like, move on. Like, when she was an ex and all that. I do like her design in this. I know some people have said that they're not that keen on it. But I think it's good. I think it fits with the overall Ungardi theme that, you know, you see other characters, like you see Chameleon uh, with a K, so the female version, and you see her at one point standing behind her and she looks similar. We know Chameleon's a cameo in the DLC in Combat Pack 1, so, you know, that makes sense. But yeah, I think Tanya looks good. Her moveset is different, but, you know, I'm open to that. I was never, like I said, I never really played her a ton in the other games. Uh, yeah, design-wise, like I said, I like it. Is it my favorite Tanya design? No, I still think her deception design is pretty much, like, her peak. Like, I think when you look at, like, Tanya as a concept, as a design, I think how she turned out in deception is definitely, you know, probably the best she's turned out. But I like this version. I'm interested to see where they go with it. Uh, they said in the bio that... Uh, they're still keeping her like romance that they kind of like retroactively added i think in mk11 like they're keeping that uh in this game like her romance with melina so that's cool i think that's that's a cool thing to add i think it gives a bit more to both characters i you know i have no problem with that and you know i think her role so basically i think she's like she's basically replaced lee may in terms of, like you know the top top kind of like soldier or guard uh in the Ungardi. so i think there's going to be some good rivalry stuff there so yeah overall yeah i honestly have nothing to complain about with tanya i think she, she looks cool 
uh, interested in her story wise I think you know yeah so obviously I no real complaints here and then lastly is Baraka and when he started showing up in the leaks I w at first was like really like are we really getting Baraka like two games in a row it's been a long time since that happened uh, which you know is actually in, when when I actually think about it now isn't that surprising because the only game he's really recently missed is MKX like if he was in MKX and like playable like obviously he was in MKX but if he was playable in X like he would have had the same streak that like Jax and Sony and Kano did was like playable in like pretty much every game since Armageddon which to me is surprising because I don't know I just never really saw Baraka as that type of character that like you know would consistently come back like that uh, I, I always saw him as like the least popular character from that MK2 cast which was like really popular and along with MK1 it's like you know when, when you look at Street Fighter you look like okay so the World Warriors like for better or worse they are the characters that mostly come back or like the majority come back and then they add like more afterwards like they're the staples Whereas I honestly feel like with MK, like the MK1 and 2 cast are the staples, like those two car like those the casts of those two games, like you will more than likely get all of those characters maybe, you know, missing one or two. And I always saw Baraka as just the least likely, like, out of that cast to come back or, you know, be a staple. Uh, but no, he's back again. I actually think he looks way better than he does in MK11. Um, I don't know, in some ways, like, just his face and his head and the whole shape of it and the way it looks... Like, to me, that honestly makes me, like... It's how I envisioned him looking in, like, MK2, if that makes sense. Like, it, just, it feels like they took the MK2, like, mask that, you know, the actor had to wear when they, you know, were doing the mocap and all that for MK2. It looks like they just took that mask and just, like, just put it in good graphics, you know, so to speak. Uh, I think it looks really good. Obviously, you know, would I like another character in that spot? Yeah, like, I'm not a big Baraka fan. I think he's okay. But I think it makes sense because, you know, with the whole thing with, um... Melina and her whole like her Tarkatan side now is now the Tarkat disease and all that uh, I think it makes sense to have Baraka as kind of a an example of like oh no like this is the worst it gets like uh, uh, you know for the player to be like okay so I mean and the cast as well to be like okay here's this thing that's going on with Melina and like his Baraka and like this is why you should be worried about, you know, her having this disease because she's going to end up like this at some point. Obviously, she's not going to look fully Baraka-ish, which I'm interested to see how they get around. But yeah, like, like the thing with Baraka is like, like that's the end goal. That's the end stage of this Tarkat disease. And in that sense, I think he makes sense. And I, I understand why he's here. And on, I, ultimately, I have no problem with it because I think just based off the rest of the roster, like, it, the rest of the roster is so strong that, like, and I, I, I don't hate Baraka, but, like, yeah, so it's like, I don't hate Baraka anyway, but, like, the rest of the roster is so strong that I don't mind having a character in there that I'm not bothered about, because I had a lot more of them in MK11, you know, and a lot less of characters I was really excited to see, like, there was more characters in MK11 where I was like, I really don't care about you, I'm not really bothered, like, I, I'm, I would be fine if you weren't here. Um, but you know there were other characters in MK11 that made up for that, but in this case, like, there's way more characters in MK1 where I'm like, oh yeah, like, you can add in, like, not whoever you want, but, like, you can add in someone like Baraka who I just really don't care about. And, like, that's fine because I've got all these other characters who I'm, like, so excited to see, like, Smoke and Rain and Lee Mei and Tanya and all the other uh, unrevealed characters that we've yet to see. So, yeah, I think it looks good. Um, I would everything, honestly, like, character-wise and story-wise and design-wise, I think I do think he he's going to be a step up from how he was in MK11, which is cool because I always thought, you know, in MK11 was kind of a not a shining moment for him but he got tre a bit better i think in mk11 he had a bit more kind of not so much agency but he had that you know he just he had his own sense of like pride and stuff that they were working towards he wasn't just a jobber like he still he still was a jobber but he had a bit more pride i guess so but i feel like you know looking at this trailer and you know the stuff he does like him leading the tarkatans i think it makes it makes more sense now i think it makes that whole thing a bit more kind of like me you know the whole him leading the Tarkatans means more now because it's not so much like oh we're just a species of freaky out world people it's like no we were people that have just been tossed aside because we got this you know disease that you know we had no choice of getting and you know we've just been outcasts and i think you know i'm a, i'm interested in seeing where that goes and now we get to the part where I'm going to bitch and moan a lot, so if you're not interested in that, I fully understand, you can feel free to turn this video off now. But it's time to talk about Combat Pack 1. And we've known about this for a while now, uh, if you saw the other video I did where I talked about the Amazon Italy League, this is no surprise, we've known these characters are coming. It is Omni-Man, Homelander, Ermac, Takeda, Quan Chi and Peacemaker. No surprise here. 
you know, it, there's really nothing. You know, like, like I said, like we've known about this for a while now. Um, I'll start off with the others. I'm not going to talk about the guests because I genuinely couldn't give a shit about any of them. Like, okay, cool. Like, I, I mean, I mean, you know, like not even that. I, I, I can't even really stomach to just say, yeah, the cool. I really don't care about them. I've never cared about guests. I feel like I'm, I'm more into them, I guess, than MK11s. But you know, that that was a low bar. I really didn't. I think Spawn was the only guest I even really liked in MK11. I thought the rest was shit. Uh, Joker was alright, but. You know, I just didn't like that he was in the game anyway, even if that is, like, one of the best versions of him, you know, in an NRS game. But I just, uh, yeah, but the rest was shit. I just didn't like them. But on the MK side, we got Quan Chi, who honestly, like, genuinely, like, looks the best out of all three, in my opinion. Um, which is funny because he's probably the least changed, which is, again, funny. Like, oh, wow, turns out not really changing that much of the character actually makes him look the best because the other two look way different now. Uh, but yeah, I get, I'm, not, I'm okay with Quan Chi. He's not my favorite character, but you know, he looks cool at least, so I'm excited to see him at some point. Uh, Takeda's a weird one because technically he's not really that different, but the design, like the futuristic with the lights and shit on it, like I get what they're going for, like, oh, this is a guy from the future, because I know at Comic Con, Ed Boone was saying, like, oh, you know, in, like, in a future game, we might get the combat kids again, like, when, you know, if a future game jumps in time again, we might see them. Uh, but for now, it's like the time frame of like, you know, this is the MK1, you know, literally and figuratively uh, of this new reboot timeline. Like we're right at the beginning. So we're telling, you know, it wouldn't make sense to see them yet. So obviously that and without in mind, it makes sense that, you know, Takeda would be more futuristic and stuff like that. I'm just I'm not that big of a fan of it. The rest of it's fine. Like the mask and the bandana is unchanged. It's weird because the lighting makes it look like he's got like gray hair, which I know he, he won't. But it just it just makes him look weird. Uh, but yeah, uh, like I said, I'm sure he'll have costumes that will kind of, you know, make him look better. But uh, yeah, just in terms of that design, I'm just not a fan of it. And then we get, like, honestly, just... Uh, I could honestly do a whole video on this. And, 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 and at some point, I genuinely might. Just not now. But, like, they, they fucking ruined Ermac. Like I'm, like, I'm not kidding. This is one of the worst designs I've ever seen for any character ever. Like, this is... I, I don't get the, I don't get what the appeal of this design is meant to be. I don't really get what it's conveying. I don't really get what the point of it is. He just looks fucking bad, and it breaks my heart honestly. I mean, if you watch all the, if you watch the videos I did like when I did the Amazon Italy leak video, the characters that should be in MK12 video like uh, Mac was number one. He's been my favorite ever since I was a kid. Ever since I played Deception. I have just adored Ermac, I thought he's just the coolest character, I loved how he looked in Deception, and then in MK9 they took the Deception concept and just perfected it with his default design, and ever since MKX they have, it just feels like they have just gone out of their way to go the absolute opposite direction, like to just go as far away from Deception and MK9 designs as humanly possible, and I just don't understand it, like to me it honestly, it honestly feels like just absolutely a complete lack of understanding from NRS in terms of like why people like Ermac, why people gravitate towards this character, what people made him. And w when it, the most baffling thing is like I've seen tweets from Ed Boon where he says that his favorite redesign from the 3D era was Ermac in Deception, which you know which makes sense because it's like it, like Deception made Ermac one of the most popular characters in the series, like because he was so good in that game, not just design but story and character. And then you just you, you get to this and he just looks awful like I, I i i do not get why they are so obsessed with taking him in this shrunken decayed decrepit like eye angle it made a bit of sense in mkx at least because you know that was them moving the story forward like multiple decades and obviously it would make sense that without Shao Kahn and no one there to really like rejuvenate him ermac he, he would shrivel up from the power that was within him and not being you know kind of maintenanced i guess like, that made sense, and I was fine with that design, I didn't like how he looked, but my problem in MKX was that he just, he didn't have any alternate designs, it was like, you, you, every costume was this decaying, decrepit mummy, and I hated that, I, you know, I, I would not have cared about MKX Ermac if they had just, if they had just given an alternative, which is why I'm probably so kind of, like, down about this, because I don't know if they're going to do that again, they very well could, like, they very well could give him an alternate costume where he looks more, you know, he looks normal and human. I, you know what, I, I doubt it to be honest because they just seem so determined to move Ermac in this route, which I just, I don't understand. And like, I get it, it's like, oh, you know, you want to make all the ninjas different now, but like, he doesn't even have a mask. And I'm not even really that bothered about a mask. Like, he can have a mask, he can not have a mask. The mask isn't a big deal. I think the design 
will look better with a mask, but I don't think it would save it. Like, you know, I just I just don't get I just don't get it. Like, I just don't get what their obsession with going down the street with Ermac is when really nobody really likes it that much. Obviously people, you know, there were fans of the MKX design and I understand that and I have no problem with like I said, I have no problem with that as an alternate costume or just one costume choice and you have a different costume choice. We'll have to see, I guess. Like I said, well, you know, it's he, he could get better costumes. Like I'm sure, you know, there is a very good chance they add in his MK11 scrap design or a, you know, a variant of it as an as an alternate costume. Uh would that fix it? You know, it would make me feel better. I'm I do like that design for uh, Mac and MK11. It's not my favorite design. I think MK9 and uh, Deception are way better. But like it's better than whatever the fuck this is. Like this is this is I I couldn't believe it when I saw this design. I was just like, I was genuinely just floored at how bad he looked. Like and I, I yes, you can say like, oh, you're just saying it's bad because you don't like it. Yeah, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I don't like the direction of it. I hundred percent admit that. But like, if this was any character, I would just be like, this this it just looks bad. Like his face looks horrendous. Like I don't get. Like he looks like an alien. Like I don't. I just don't get it. Like I don't get why they keep going this direction with Ermac when the majority of people prefer how he looked in Deception and MK9. Like even his alt costume in MK9, a lot of people like that one. Like they could have gone that route with him, but they just they they are just insistent on going with this decrepit, grey skinned, fucking mummy piece of shit design. I, I just I'm so sick of it. I was so hyped to see Ermac back. Like I I, I was like you know having to stare at him dead in the crypt with a really good design for like five years or however long it was in mk11 and the whole time i was like it's good like it'll be worth it because then he'll come back in mk12 i was what i was telling myself because so many people were like upset at how they handled him in 11 like it was like oh you know he'll he, i mean even if he's dlc he will more than likely be in mk12 which is now like mk1 and then when he got leaked for the combat pack i was like oh like finally like i'm so excited to see him i couldn't wait you know new era new timeline there was nothing holding him back you know he could be this he could be that like there was the sky's the limit and like just once again they've just made him another decrepit gray-skinned ugly fucking mummy and i just i just don't get it so yeah that was a bummer <laughs> you know they really disappointed me i really was just like oh man like I wanted this character back and I, I was so excited to see what they were going to do with him and then they just, once again, they've just gone in the complete opposite direction of what, you know, people wanted. And like, obviously, I know I'm going to probably get some people online on this comments and other, like on Reddit or Twitter, be like, oh, I like the MKX design. Good for you, I don't. And judging by the reactions from almost, you know, the majority of the MK fan base and the Ermac fan base, not many people like this design because it, it, it just looks bad. Like, I'm fine with the decrepit design. But, like, I, obviously the basis of it is, like, as long as there's an alternative. But, like, even for a decrepit design, like, I, I his MKX design looked way better than this. You know? Like, it, I, I don't like his MKX design, but, like, it was a good concept. I get the idea of it. I get the meaning behind it. This just looks bad, and I don't get why it exists. Like, this should be a new era. Why is Ermac, like, still this just decaying, grey-skinned, ugly, sunken-faced mummy again? I, I don't get it. But yeah, anyway, that's my thoughts on the news uh, for MK1. Uh, overall, like, I was still excited for the game. Like, the base roster, I think, so far, and the base game still looks amazing. Uh, this stuff with Ermac, though, is absolutely, like, just the biggest blow, I think, for the game so far. Which, I think, all things considered, isn't, you know, is not, no, obviously it's not good. But, like, the fact that it's, like, DLC is kind of, like, the first real problem I've had with the game. And it's not even the DLC itself. Like, I think the combat pack itself is, like, it's... It's okay. It's not my favorite combat pack, but, you know, it does the job, I guess. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to leave things here. Uh, like I said, I don't have much time today, so I just want to get this out quickly. I know it's probably ended up being close to 20 minutes again or something. But, yeah, so that's it, really. Uh, I shall see you all for the next info drop, which will probably be Evo at this rate, which is about two weeks away. So uh, there will be also, no doubt, other, you know, video game stuff. We'll probably get more news on Tekken 8 and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, so I shall see you all later. Thank you all for watching and listening to me bitch and moan again. Uh, but I do appreciate it. So thanks for watching and I shall see you all later. Goodbye. We await your return, warrior.